नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू एन सी लाइव फोन इन प्रोग्राम माय नेम इज तनवी खुराना एंड इन दिस इंग्लिश क्लास वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ पोएम फायर एंड आइस इट्स रिटन बाय रॉबर्ट फ्रॉस्ट एंड ऑल द टेंथ क्लास स्टूडेंट्स यू वाचिंग अस ऑन पीएम ई विद या चैनल नंबर टेन If you have read this poem, if there's anything that uh, caught your eye and uh, you found it very interesting, there's something that needs clarification, anything at all, then please connect it with us. You can send your emails on our email ID, which is dth dot class ten at the rate c i e t dot n i c dot i n. We have an expert who will be more than happy to answer all your doubts, all your queries, and he is. Dr. Amit Ranjan, let's meet him. Welcome, sir. Hello. Sir Hello. is from CIT and CRT, New Delhi. And uh, without wasting any more time, let's just ask him that what is this uh, poem all about? So, before beginning uh, sure. with the explanation of this poem, can we just read the poem? Definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, so this is a very um, short poem, just nine lines, um, but it's a very profound uh, uh, poem. Hmm. and uh, like great all great poets robert frost has designed it to last a long time so even though it, it's written a very long time ago um, you'll see that it's more than pertinent for um, today's day so let's okay. have a look at the poem sure <clears throat> fire and ice by robert frost some say some say the world will end in fire some say in ice from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire but if it had to perish twice i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice um so that is the poem and um, let us quickly look at um, the form um <coughs> of the poem what are the formal elements and then we'll discuss uh, at length uh, uh, the poem as analyzing the poem so if you see the poem it's got a rhyme scheme of a b a a and b c b c b so let's go back to the lines and that will make it clear so the first third and fourth line and so this is how we write rhyme schemes a is for fire and desire and fire rhyme with it again so a b a a and the word ice from the first stanza is repeated in the second one and so this becomes b c b c b so this is how we uh, look at rhyme scheme and and so this decides the rhythm of the poem in in many ways another um, thing to look in the poem is that it's got alliteration alliteration is a form of speech um, in which the consonant sounds are repeated so there's word will and favor fire over here some say that the world will end in fire and from what <clears throat> i've tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire so you repeat the consonant sounds it creates a certain rhythm as also a certain emphasis um is is laid down um <clears throat> then there is an interesting figure of speech which lots of um, politicians and public speakers use by repeating certain phrases again and again um to emphasize uh, like a chant <clears throat> the repetition of a phrase for literary effect that is anaphora and let us see the first two lines over here some say the world will end in fire some say in ice and frost would have gone on but he likes to keep his poem short and so this anaphora is uh, um, iterated only twice but just trying to demonstrate to you the the figures of speech over here um <clears throat> and there's another figure of speech which you would like to learn is called enjambment when so generally in poem lines are self contained so what one line says the second line says something else or it's a continuation of the thought but when the same line runs on into the other line to complete meaning then it's called enjambment um and if you read emily dickinson's uh, poetry uh, was a famous 19th century american poet she used enjambment to great effect so let us see how here it's used here as you can see on your screen i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great so you can see that this is one one thought one sentence but it's broken into three lines um um in the poem <clears throat> i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great so ice is also great particularly is a continuum but is broken up into two lines to lay emphasis on the greatness of ice um in that particular line 
So these are some of the formal elements of the poem, but now let us get into the poem itself. And for that let us, because it is just a nine line poem, you can read it again as well. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice, from what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. So Tanvi, you can see that it is a very short poem, but it is a very packed and a very coded poem. It has got at least three layers, which we will get to, but first let us get through um, what the key elements of the poem are. Absolutely. It is an eschatological poem. It is a difficult word, but um, eschatology is a branch of study which deals with death, with doomsday, with the end of the world. So all major world religions predict the end of the world, whether it is Christianity or Islam or Hinduism, which talks about prele. Um, and so there has been a flood before and there will be an incoming flood because the world has to be reformed because of the corruption in the world, the world will end. So all religions say that and every religion talks about a doomsday that is coming. Yeah. So in that sense, it is an eschatological poem um, uh, and this word deals with the coming of doomsday. So uh, this eschatology, it is not only in literature, it is used in films as well if I am not wrong. Absolutely. So it, it goes with other forms of cinema um, as well. Absolutely. Right? Cinema derives always from literature. So cinema would reflect like literature reflects uh, the world mm. and life. So cinema is full of uh, eschatological uh, uh, films, let us say. True. Yeah. And uh, Robert Frost is not the only poet who has used uh, this form. Um, no, there are many poets uh, who have uh, used it and immediately uh, Leonard Cohen comes to my mind, his uh, poem and also a song mm -hmm. called Who by Fire where he says who by fire, who by water, who by this merry merry month of May, so it is a modern take on it, uh, who by barbiturate which is poison, who by the powder, drugs, who shall I say is calling. So he is also invoking that uh, almighty who is invoked in Judaic religion. Um, who says that there will be an end and who is that uh, entity who is calling upon us um, and shall this world end by fire or what shall it end in. So this has always been a preoccupation um, both for religion and literature <coughs> and of course humanity that Absolutely. we are all um, uh, afraid of death and always wondering what is after life etc. So it is a part of that, yeah. part of that kind of uh, discussion. Uh, so there are two major influences on uh, Robert's Frost poem over here. One is Dante's Inferno, which is an, uh, a very important literary work from the 9th, 14th century, where he talks in detail about depictions of hell, what happens in hell, the fires of hell, etc. Mm -hmm. And also Frost had a conversation with an um, astronomer uh, about how the world would end if the sun either exploded or shut down. If the sh sun shut down, we won't get any energy, yeah. and the world would freeze or it would explode and then of course everything would explode. Is and it true that move. he actually had a conversation with yeah, yeah, so this is recorded in his biography etc. Okay. And, and so this could be an influence um, uh, over this uh, uh, poem. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, one very important thing about this poem is uh, the use of um, irony. Hmm. Um, irony is when you, <clears throat> um, it is it's a biting satire. Uh, by using a metaphor. So you are not directly indicting somebody, but you are saying something subtly, but, but the bite can be uh, very intense. Mm -hmm. So for example, over here, uh, you know, this is almost like uh, a boardroom meeting, an office meeting that people are discussing, oh, how should the world end? Would you prefer fire? Would you prefer ice? It is mm -hmm. like, would you prefer tea? Would you prefer coffee? Something mm -hmm. like that. And so he is talking in that tone. So he is in a way critiquing um, <clears throat> official bureaucracies um, where things are decided so flimsily, so casually, which change the fortunes of people, wars happen, countries are partitioned and, yeah. and so on and so forth. So he's critiquing that sort of thing and taking a very casual attitude to a very uh, profound matter. And by taking a very casual attitude, he's being very, uh, very sarcastic and very ironical at how things, uh, how important things are treated uh, in this world by, by the officials who be, so to um, say. Um, right. And um, the symbolism of fire and ice, and this is where 
the crux of the poem is, and, and we can go line by line now um, to figure out the meanings. It fire, so there are th at least three layers in it. Now that we have faced um, uh, with a pandemic, um, so and many people have had concerns, and uh, many near and dear ones of many people have died. So we've seen death very up close uh, yeah. recently in the second wave, and so um, this. Um, concern with uh, with the end of the world um, is very imminent in this, mm. uh, which could be through war, and, and wars are of various forms. It's uh, now we are on the verge of a nuclear war, with so many countries having nuclear uh, weapons, the chemical wars, and now we are talking of biological warfare, and and people are also have ideas that. Um, so there is no, no confirmation about the current ongoing virus, but there, there, are, there have always been suspicions that there could be a biological warfare that could be unleashed by the uh, nations. And so <clears throat> it is not merely fire and ice that he is talking about, he is also talking about the, this fire of ambitions of, of countries to annihilate others, um, <clears throat> which is a matter of great concern. So that is one level. And, and the other level is also climate change in this, yeah. that, that we clearly know that because of the thawing of ice um, uh, in uh, the Arctic and Antarctica, uh, the water level is rising. Also, <clears throat> various viruses which would have been trapped for millions of years um, could be released because of the thawing of that ice. So, Robert Frost in his time, of course, was not concerned with climate change. Uh, he died in 1974 and he was born in <clears throat> 1860, so he, uh, 1870. So he lived a very lo long life, but in his time these were not concerns. Of course, there was industrialization happening in, in, in Europe at a big scale, so this would also have been a concern. But see how that the poem is very pertinent today, that we are troubled with uh, 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 climate change, where yeah. there are rising temperatures as well as thawing of ice. So this poem could literally become true as well, whether you choose fire uh, or whether you choose ice with all the forest fires. and. There is big forest fire in the Amazon, in yes. Brazil and in Australia as well. Mm. So these are concerns which have come out literally true. Mm. So these are two larger angles at which uh, uh, Frost, we could look at this poem. But also he is talking about human nature itself. Mm. Um, fire as a metaphor for raw ambition, greed and how we push our way through the crowd and we are willing to do anything to achieve um, because ambition is given such a premium. And history is rife with these uh, uh, anecdotes where people have killed their brothers and fathers to so attain the throne. is it like ambition has made people uh, greedy? Obviously, and um, uh, so it's, it's, it's unchecked and inhuman, yeah. uh, so to say. Mm -hmm. Aurangzeb killed his three brothers, for example, jailed his father. And there are millions of instances in history, there's no need to point out one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and on the other hand, so this is the metaphor of fire. And the metaphor of ice is the hatred and the indifference. Mm. That we look at poor people or poverty and we get indifferent or we get indifferent to death, we get indifferent to suffering. Mm. Uh, so indifference is one thing and hatred is another where in hatred also uh, you go out of your way to uh, damage somebody or, or do something like that. And so both ambition, hatred and indifference are the human qualities or lack of qualities that Frost is uh, addressing in this poem. So let us go line by line and see what he wants to uh, uh, say. Yeah? Sure. Some say the world will, will end in fire, some say in ice. So he is making a joke out of it, like, they, like for example, there is a party and friends are sitting and, and they are discussing whether the world would end in fire or in ice. And so he is also saying that a matter which is very important, um, you, are actually, you actually trivialize it because everybody thinks that nothing will happen to them until it comes to them. So we all think somebody else will fall sick or somebody else will be destroyed, but we are safe. We always keep thinking that. And which is why people don't wear masks because they think they don't, they are not going to fall ill. From what I have tasted of desire, and so he gives an answer over here. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. And he continues the very casual tone of friends sitting around a bonfire and discussing. And one of them says, oh, um, what I know of desire, what I know of ambition, of raw ambition, um, I hold with those who favor fire. And so ambition is a very effective tool or anger, so uh, different forms of fire. Ambition would lead to anger, to rage, 
and that is a very effective tool for, for destruction in the, in the world. And this is what has created wars, several wars have been fought over personal egos and uh, uh, matters like that. The second stanza, uh, he says, but if it had to perish twice, which is the most ironical statement of this poem, because <clears throat> if the world perishes, it won't need to perish twice. twice yeah. And so he's saying that human beings have such capacity for multiple destructions, yeah. that the world could be destroyed and it could rise again, and again it would be destroyed. And which is also roughly our history, that so many civilizations were uh, wiped out and, and we rise again, that is our resilience. But we do not learn lessons from what happened in the past and how we destroyed ourselves and start embark on a new journey of destruction. The same as if, uh, with um, the COVID situation in our country. Uh, yeah, say. absolutely. That if, if we do not take uh, measures uh, for the future, it, it comes back again. And, um, so, it's, so it's very pertinent as you can see hmm. that great poets, I, I say again, design their work in such a way. So, so he's not made it very contemporary. He's not brought in American politics over here, for example. He's designed it that it has a very universal sort of, of a, uh, okay. message. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate. And it's the same speaker, the narrator, who is voting for fire to destroy the world. But as an afterthought, he says, but OK, if you get a second chance to destroy the world, I think ICE is also a good candidate to say that for destruction, ICE is also great and would suffice. So it would suffice both literally and metaphorically. If ice melts on our glaciers, the world is going to end. There would be a flood and everything would be submerged. So literally, he's predicting a climate change, as well as the coldness of our heart, our indifference to other people's suffering or their concerns. Um, <clears throat> the world is becoming, has become so selfish um, that we barely believe in sharing or camaraderie is what he's saying and he's talking about the modern city and so he is writing in the aftermath of of the first world war when there was widespread destruction and the european countries destroyed each other um, and so there was a huge crisis in terms of uh, thought in terms of philosophy literature and this is when lots of poets were writing like this and and so he says because of the hatred that the european countries had for each other and what was it about it was a greed for colonies and which already they had inflicted a lot of suffering on Africa and India and America. Yeah. And, and there was a lot of greed between them to amass more and more wealth, get more and more colonies. And eventually it led to this uh, war, um, which resulted in a huge catastrophe. And so he says that hatred is good enough to destroy this world as well. So both literally ice can destroy the world through climate change or the hatred indifference in our hearts. Um, We've always uh, already seen that it's a post-World uh, War I poem and um, uh, we've also seen that it's, it talks about the capacity for uh, human destruction. But one remarkable thing Tanvi here is that he does not in these two paragraphs talk of any redem redemption. There is no possibility of saving the world. Either fire will destroy the world or ice, but they're not talking about saving the world. There's no Superman or Spider-Man coming to save the world. Okay. The end of the world is imminent for Robert Frost in this uh, uh, poem. Yeah. So very quickly, I think we are running out of time. Yes, very quickly, uh, we'll talk we've got, about we've got <coughs> uh, Robert Frost, okay. um, who lived between 1874 and 1963, as I've already pointed out. And he's a major poetic figure, not just for America, but for uh, uh, globally. Um, you read his poems even without knowing it. We'll come to some famous lines towards the end. He's an American born in California. And he's the only poet probably to have got four Pulitzer Prizes for uh, poetry. Initially, he did not meet with much success in America. It was initially in England that he was published. But now he's part of school textbooks across the world. And uh, <clears throat> most of his work deals with rural America and pastoral descriptions, which are very nice. It's in the romantic tradition of poetry. Romantic tradition does not really mean poetry related to love, but um, romantic tradition of poetry is one that relates to nature and, and redeeming the world through uh, nature in, in, in sense with the capital R. And as you've already seen, his work is in, infused with ambiguity and irony. The whole poem is very ironical and it's also ambiguous because you don't know whether the narrator is, is serious or, or uh, he's joking. 
Um, and um, there's some very famous poems by Robert Frost which you have come across already, either in some class textbook or in, in some other books or you'd have seen it in a film or whatever. Um, <clears throat> one is stopping by the woods on a snowy evening in which the lines uh, ring true at the end and the very famous miles to go before I sleep, miles to go before I sleep. And the other one is uh, <clears throat> two roads diverged in a yellow wood and I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. That is also often quoted, how the path we take decides our uh, destiny. And he's such a celebrated poet, there have been commemorative stamps about him and so on and so forth. And um, one critic says that he's one of America's rare public literary figures and almost an artistic institution. So for a person to be called an institution to himself is a big deal and which shows uh, how tall Robert Frost is. And I and highly recommend that you read uh, uh, a lot of poetry of Robert Frost. It will give you an insight into uh, not just romantic poetry and American life, but an insight into the future as you have seen that, that he does write with a lot of uh, prophetic vision for the, for the world. And uh, the messages uh, involved in his poems, they are relevant even today. Absolutely. So we don't see any reason not to read his poems. Please read his poems and uh, understand its deep meaning. Well, uh, he didn't write it today, but yes, they are still um, happening and still meaningful. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you to all the participants for watching this entire session. Well, literature is uh, never boring and uh, we can always read, read and read. So if you find it interesting, please let us know. And uh, this was all about today's uh, session of uh, English on Robert Frost's poem, Fire and Ice. But uh, we're going to come back on uh, PME with their channel number 9 after a short break and uh, we'll talk about social sciences topic, poverty as a challenge. Stay with us, don't go anywhere and uh, take great care of yourself. Also, get vaccinated. Thank you. Let us stay.